Blood Sugar and Insulin Regulation Have you ever gone without eating for 24 hours and noticed you're not even hungry anymore? That feeling is one of the unexpected changes that happens when you fast for a full day. At this point, your blood sugar has leveled out at a steady baseline, and your insulin has dropped into its fasting pattern. But before you get there, your appetite is very different. Early on, the drop in blood sugar creates that uncomfortable, why am I doing this, moment that most people feel. That drop triggers ghrelin, the hormone that's responsible for hunger. Ghrelin rises in short bursts, which is why hunger hits sharply for a few minutes and eventually fades. The cycle repeats every few hours, and it gives people the false impression that fasting makes you more and more hungry. But those waves don't get stronger, they just come and go. When you continue the fast despite feeling hungry, low insulin levels trigger leptin. Leptin is the hormone that helps your brain realize you have stored energy to spare. And once your brain gets that message, your hunger subsides. By the 24-hour stage of fasting, the glucose from your last meal is gone, and your blood sugar and insulin levels have stabilized. With no new carbohydrates coming in and less insulin circulating, your system shifts away from storing energy and starts using what you already have. Fat burning activation. Where does your energy come from when your body runs out of food? The answer is all that fat stored inside you. By 24 hours, your body is pulling from those reserves. Once your liver's glycogen supply runs dry, usually somewhere between 12 and 18 hours into a fast, your fat cells get a signal to release stored fatty acids into the bloodstream. The liver picks them up and turns them into molecules called ketones, and those ketones become the replacement fuel for almost every cell in your body, including your brain. By the 24-hour mark, ketone production is climbing, and your metabolism has entered what researchers call a catabolic state, where fat burning takes priority over fat storage. This isn't some backup system your body reluctantly turns to, it's an ancient survival tool that kept your ancestors alive when food was hard to find. Ketones do more than provide energy. They also work indirectly to lower oxidative stress and help cells repair themselves in ways that glucose cannot. But for most people, the main thing they care about is how this helps them lose weight. When fasting becomes part of your routine, your body keeps returning to stored fat for energy, and before long, your clothes fit better and your waistline is down. Decreased inflammation. There's another physical change that happens around the 24-hour mark that most people don't think about. They start to feel lighter. Not just from the lack of food, but from something else that's happening under the surface. When you fast, your body produces more of a lipid called arachidonic acid, which helps bring inflammation throughout the body down, at least temporarily. Studies show that just 24 hours without food can lower cytokines, the inflammatory messengers your immune cells use, by as much as 60% in some tissues. This matters because chronic, low-grade inflammation is linked to almost every modern disease. The puffiness in your hands, the stiffness in your knees, the low-grade bloating you've gotten used to. A lot of it traces back to inflammatory signals that never turn off. A single day without food might not cure anything, but it does hit pause on the cycle, giving swelling a chance to go down, joints a chance to loosen up, and overworked systems a chance to rest. Autophagy. Your cells have a cleaning system that never fully kicks in until the food stops coming. That process is called autophagy, from Greek words meaning self-eating, and it's one of the most overlooked benefits of fasting. When nutrients get scarce, your cells form small membrane sacs called autophagosomes that act like internal garbage trucks. They swallow up damaged proteins, broken down parts, and cellular junk, then deliver them to lysosomes, compartments filled with enzymes that break everything down into reusable parts. What was once waste becomes raw material for building new cells. This process runs at low levels all the time, but fasting accelerates it. Studies show autophagy starts to ramp up around the 24-hour mark, with activity continuing to rise the longer the fast goes on. The importance goes beyond cleaning. Autophagy clears out defective proteins that pile up with age, the kind linked to brain diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. It removes damaged mitochondria before they can leak harmful molecules and even target cells showing precancerous changes, breaking them down before they can multiply. When you eat all the time, this system never gets the green light to run at full power, but fasting sends the signal that it's time to clean house. Growth Hormone Increase While your body breaks down fat and cleans out damaged cells, something else is rising in your bloodstream. Human Growth Hormone HGH comes from the pituitary gland and usually surges during deep sleep and hard exercise. But fasting triggers one of the biggest natural spikes in growth hormone your body can make. 
Research shows that a 24-hour fast can raise HGH levels by an average of 1,300% in women and nearly 2,000% in men. Two things cause this. Insulin drops, which takes the break off HGH release, and ghrelin rises, which tells the pituitary gland to pump out more. Why does this matter? Growth hormone isn't just about growing. In adults, it plays a major role in protecting lean tissue. During fasting, HGH tells the body to burn fat for fuel while keeping muscle from being broken down. This is why fasting doesn't lead to extreme muscle loss the way long-term dieting often can. Your body evolved to protect its most useful tissue during times without food, and HGH is part of that defense. The spike is temporary, and levels go back to normal once you eat, but the protective effect during the fasting window is real. Gut and Digestive Rest most people think the digestive system only works when food is moving through it. In reality, it never stops, unless you give it a reason to. When you fast for 24 hours, your gut enters a state that rarely happens in modern life, actual rest. Without food coming in, the stomach stops making large amounts of acid, the pancreas pauses its release of digestive enzymes, and the small intestine, usually busy absorbing nutrients, finally gets a chance to repair itself. One of the most overlooked benefits of fasting is what happens to the migrating motor complex, or MMC. This is a wave of electrical activity that sweeps through the digestive tract every 90 to 120 minutes, but only when the gut is empty. The MMC pushes leftover material, dead cells, and bacteria out of the small intestine and into the colon. When you eat all day, this cleaning wave never finishes its job. Stuff builds up. Bacterial overgrowth becomes more likely. Bloating and gas become everyday problems. A full day without food lets the MMC run start to finish, clearing out debris and cutting down on conditions that let bad bacteria grow. At the same time, the intestinal lining, which replaces about 20% of its cells each day, can heal itself without the extra workload of digestion. For people dealing with constant bloating, indigestion, or food sensitivities, fasting gives the digestive system something no pill ever can, a much needed break. Immune system recalibration. Fasting doesn't boost your immune system the way a vitamin might. It does something more useful. It clears out old immune cells and replaces them with new ones. During the first several hours of a fast, white blood cells start to drop. Monocytes, the immune cells that drive inflammation, leave the bloodstream and return to the bone marrow. It may look like the system is weakening, but it's actually clearing house. When food comes back, stem cells in the bone marrow start producing fresh white blood cells to replace the old, damaged, or worn-out ones that got cleared during the fast. For people with overactive immune responses or autoimmune tendencies, this reset can bring real relief. Researchers have also found that repeated fasting cycles can help cancer patients recover immune function after chemotherapy and may slow some of the immune system decline that comes with age. But there's a catch. Since the rush of monocytes returning to the bloodstream can temporarily spike inflammation, breaking a fast with a heavy meal can backfire. How you start eating again matters almost as much as the fast itself. Brain Chemistry Shift Most people expect to feel foggy and slow after a day without food, but in reality, the opposite tends to happen. When glucose runs low and ketones start showing up, the brain actually runs better. Ketones cross into the brain easily and provide a steadier energy source than glucose, with no spikes and crashes. At the same time, fasting triggers the production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, a protein that's essential for learning, memory, and forming new neural connections. Studies show that intermittent fasting raises BDNF levels significantly, which helps explain why so many people report sharper focus when they go several hours without food. The change also affects neurotransmitter balance. Ketones seem to boost GABA activity, which calms overactive brain circuits and lowers anxiety. Meanwhile, dopamine becomes more responsive, resulting in increased motivation and alertness. From an evolutionary standpoint, this makes sense. A brain that got dull during food scarcity would have been a death sentence. Instead, the human brain evolved to get sharper and more capable of finding the next meal. So if you've ever wondered how a single day without food can change almost everything in your body, now you have your answer. If you like the explanations without the fluff, stick around and check out more.